Never have I ever used action wobbles. Been making cards since 2017. Never used an action wobbler. Today, I am going to use one for the first time. Won't you join me in this journey for springiness and shakiness? That card project is coming up next. I may have to use a boing sound effect. I'm just saying. So here are the action wobblers that I have had laying around. Actually, I had these for a while. And then I ordered smaller ones when I realized how big these were. And so I think we are going to go with the small ones. And I'm going to do something with my Wild Love stamp set. But one of the things I realized is you have to make sure that it's big enough, right? So I'm actually going to pull out the die because I want to use the koala today because I think it's very cute. And... As long as that action wobbler will fit behind, I think we're going to be golden. So that's that's the stamp set, and that is the action wobbler. So this is a whole new, you know, whole new world. A couple other things I want to share. I recently bought this cute little case on Amazon for my Prismacolor pencils, and now I have them all in this lovely case. Now there's only a little room for growth and for me that's probably fine. I do not need every pencil under the sun, right? I'm not I'm not that good of an artist. So here we're just going to have a few. And honestly, I feel like I have every color I need. Although I will point out that I did purchase a warm gray pencil and a cool gray pencil. This is 50% and this is 30% because Warm gray is kind of my go-to color for critters. But I wanted to show you this because I'm also going to try out a new product today that I ordered called Zest It. Now I purchased this from a UK company, but they have US shipping rates, so it wasn't that bad. I only had to wait, I don't know, maybe less than two weeks to get it. This was recommended to me by many people who watched my Gamsol video, which I'll be sure to pop a link up here. When I first tested Gamsol, many people informed me that even though you can't smell it, it's, it's highly toxic, you don't wanna breathe it in, and this is a non-toxic alternative. I got the scent-free, the citrus-free one, but apparently the regular bottle smells like orange, but it does the same thing, it's supposed to anyway blend with stumps. Okay. I'm going to use my blending stumps today and I'm going to give it a try. I actually dumped the Gamsol that was here. I'm going to pop some in here. I know that many of you told me as well, I could just put a cotton ball in and I may try that as well, but I'm just going to put a little in the jar and we're going to, well, I'm going to test it out today. So going to do that for coloring. So let me get started with some stamping and then we will begin to test it out. Again, I want to use the koala. So I'm going to stamp two of him just to see. And I guess, I mean, I could do an elephant too. I love the elephant because he's, he's big, you know, and I like that. I think that's enough room for the dies. Then I can have two little friends to play with. So let's get you there. Why not? Make sure my cardstock, now I've already used this friend, so he's pretty primed, but I haven't used the koala yet. So I'm just gonna run my hand over this to prime it a little bit. I'm stamping with the Gina K Black Onyx because this is a really good ink to use with solvents and I'm assuming it'll do the same with the Zest It, but let's give it a try. And I'll use my stamp press, my Debbie tool which is just the right size, and it has this nice felt pad, if you've never seen one of these before, to help apply pressure onto the Misty Door. Okay, and I'm going to stamp the koala one more time. The elephant stamped great, but I want the koala to be darker on that nose. Okay, bringing it down, press. Actually, that looks really good. I'll go ahead here now and just flip the paper, right? Easy peasy, and stamp a backup. All right, and now I have a couple ready to go. I'll go ahead and just wipe my stamps down with my chamois for a quick clean. Oop, a little squeaky. 
and close that up. And now we'll move on to our coloring. All right, I have my little uh, sanding block for, I think you just go like this, right? You just sand off the color from what you used. I don't know, I had actually cut mine before. Again, I want to be <laughs> really clear. I am not a professional artist, right? This is one of the fun things about card making and crafting is that we're just playing. We're just having some fun. We're trying some different types of materials to color with. So that's where we're at. Now, I don't know what this looks like, so I'm just gonna actually do a little right there. Oh, I think it's gonna be wonderful. Okay, so starting with my koala, I'm going to just add a little color to his, his side, right? Like, just like if I were doing some kind of natural shading, okay? Just, we'll just add a little here, okay? One of the things I do like about the idea of colored pencils is that they are easier to control for folks like me who maybe don't have, you know, all the coloring skill in the world, right? I'm not, like I said, not a professional artist. I'm literally just playing, having some fun with this stuff. And we'll just add a little, little there, okay? So that's gonna be that. And I might as well just blend that out before I add my pink to see what it looks like. And this is the 50% warm gray or 50% gray show. <laughs> Someone told me, Kathy, the English colors are right there, the name, so now I know. All right, I have a little bit of the zest it in here, and again, I know I can do the cotton ball, and I may try that uh, eventually, but right now, I'm just going to take my stump and get it a little bit wet, just a little, right? I think that's what I wanna do. And now, I'm just going to blend out this color and see what it looks like. I just kind of work in little circles like that. Like that. Kind of blends it out. Now here's the thing too. I let me get it a little wetter. Yeah, okay. By the way, this paper is just the Nina Solar White Classic Crest in the 110 pound. It's not watercolor paper. Right? I just kind of figured, well, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use a regular old cardstock here. Now this gray is quite dark compared to what my Copics might be. But let's come in here. I mean this isn't any different to my eye than the Gamsol. And again, if it's a safer I, I you know, I'm not gonna be using this every day of the week either. That's something that I do want to keep in mind. Uh you know, so let's do a little more here. And who knows, I could just decide to put this in my uh, empty Copic marker, which I did do with my Gamsol. Could just empty that out and replace it with the Zest It, because that's also a nice, a nice option, okay? All right. It's not bad, it's not bad. But it's not horrible, right? Okay. So now he just has a little color, nothing, nothing heroic, right? I wish I would have gone with a slightly lighter pencil, but I probably will order the 30% or even the 20% gray marker or pencil. I don't plan to extend my pencil collection to be huge. I don't need, I don't need all the colors. You know what I mean? This is going to be just fine to have a few. All right. I feel like that's good. Okay, gonna be fine. Now let's add a little bit of pink because I want him to have some pink in his ears in the centers. Like that. A little bit here. I'm gonna blend that out too. I'm gonna give him a little pink cheeks. Now, of course, you know, people who really know what they're doing, and I'm actually going to give him a little pink belly. 
you know, they're, they're going to make things that are much fancier than what I do, but I just want them to have a little pink belly. Like that. And then hopefully I can soften that out a little. Isn't that cute though? A <laughs> little belly. Okay. And I'll use the other end of the stump here. And we're just going to blend that out in a little circle so it's softer. That's cute. It's very cute. Soft. Yeah. Actually, that looks good. I feel like it's very simple, but I also think that's very cute. Again, gray might be a little dark, but let's try to blend his little belly. Just kind of color over it and then just kind of blend it up. Like that. I don't want it to be feathery at the bottom. I'd rather it just be a little soft coming up from the bottom or like into his belly is where I want it to be softer. And honestly, that's really all I'm doing. That's cute. All right, <laughs> that's my critter. It's so simple. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna do any other coloring because I'm going to, well, but you know what? I feel like I should soften this a little bit. It just looks a little dark up here or at least just bring him down a little that and I think that's the nice thing I can go back over some of these areas right they, they can be softened a bit that's not bad it's not bad okay he's got a little depth he's got a little dimension and let me grab the coordinating die I've got the coordinating die taped into place and I'm going to run this through my die cut machine Well, I do have a cute little friend uh, to go on my wobbler. Even if he's a little too shadowy in there, I think it's going to be just fine. Okay, let me move on to stamping the greeting, but I also want to do a little stenciling for some grounding. So let's get some more products. Actually, before I do that, I want to see what the difference is if I do just go Copic. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with W1. And I'm going to kind of go along the same route that I did because here's the thing. Is this going to be a better way to go? I don't know. It might look better. And I'm not, I'm not going to do much. I didn't like the top of his head looking like that. I kind of just want it to be a little softer. You know what I mean? I feel like I just went too heavy. Okay, maybe his top of his head needs nothing. W1, W0, right? A little bit, a little bit in here with a little darker or lighter, I mean. I feel like this is gonna look better. <laughs> a little W0. Now just a little W0 on his head, okay? Like that. And then I'll bring in R20, which is basically about the same pink, and we'll go. A little pink in his ears. A little pink in his ears. Now that's what I don't know how I'm gonna blend out. A little there. A little there. Actually, maybe I don't need to blend. Well, okay. Make it a little bigger. Make it a little bigger. I could blend that out with a colorless blender. And then I'm just gonna add a little belly. Like that. See if I like this better. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just a little belly. I don't know, I haven't decided. Actually, I feel like that has kind of a cooler vibe. Mm. Okay, let me grab my colorless blender. This is the actual Copic colorless blender. And sometimes, you know, you just go in, go around the edges and it'll soften them a little. 
right? Soften, soften, we'll see. Here, we'll just soften around the edges. I don't want to get rid of all that gray that I just did. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I like this. That looks like a hot mess. <laughs> I wonder what would happen. Let's just see. What happens if you take a colorless blender to pencils? Does that soften it? Oh, okay. We're just, we're just literally experimenting with the world right now. You know what? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, but that did soften a little. I actually think I'm gonna stick with the original one, although I do like the warmth of that, but I feel like we're just, you know, just apples to apples. So that kind of shows you the difference. I could go ahead and die cut this, but I feel like his belly and those actually look like he has something very wrong with his skin. So just wanted to see, I'm gonna proceed with this friend. I'm going through, I have these cute little stencil binders from Tailored Expressions for my six by six stencils. And I actually love these because they really do allow you to flip through and find stencils. I sort of have them organized and gosh, but you know what I think I'm gonna do? Which one is that? Oh, I do like that too. Ah, it'd be cute to have. I think what I'm going to do, I have a stencil that I love so much and it's the Simon Says Stamp Tumbling Hearts. And I think, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add a light little grounding with these hearts. So let me grab some tools for ink blending. I'm gonna clean off my brush and take this out. And this actually has a little bit of pixie spray residue on it. So I think what I want to do, I wanna, I wanna create like a centering area of these hearts. I could use the magnets, but I do like ink blending on this mat. It just makes it easy. So I'm gonna tape you here, okay? And the idea is gonna be my little wobbler is gonna be in the center. So I'm just gonna do a few little hearts. I, I don't know, if I don't like it, I'll, I'll start over. You know what I mean? Like I'll, I'll get in there, I'll pick a different thing. But I feel like this color is so fun and it will look good with the R20. So we'll just go in the center for a little grounding. And I am holding the stencil in place, okay. And I think I only need one dip into the pad just to have this be nice and soft coming out. Also, I trimmed this to three and three quarters by five before I started. I think that'll be fine. It's just gonna give us the idea of the hearts. Let me lift this part up and see what that looks like. A little heart grounding and he's going to be in the middle. I actually think that's cute. And the color match is actually really good. All right, let's move on. I'm going to put the quality time, see how cheeky and punny that is, onto some more white cardstock here. Grab my anti-static powder. This is also from Tailored Expressions. This just adds that layer of powder that removes static and oil from your paper. So hopefully when you go to sprinkle on your powder, your powder will only stick to where your embossing ink goes. And I'm using Versamark. Oh, although I haven't used this stamp yet. So I hope it, I hope it takes the ink well. Versamark is also great for conditioning your stamps. Like even if you just put it on, wipe it off a few times, it can help to condition your stamps. And then I, I always make sure that my stamp is completely dry before I start again. I think this will be fine. Okay. And we'll bring this down and again, press to transfer. I don't think I'm, well, you know what? I could stamp it again, although that looks pretty good. Let's just tap it that and that. I'm going to do some Simon Says Stamp Silver. I'm really into this ultra fine silver powder lately. It embosses so beautifully. I 
actually my paper does have a lot of static on it that's a lot sticking but we'll see we'll clean it up okay and all right let me funnel this back in to the jar and then I always wipe my paper with my Swiffer cloth here, just when I'm using um, something other than white, and wipe the surface as well. I'm just going to take one of my brushes here and just, it's just a dry brush, and just brush away any powder that's where I don't want it to be. Oh, that looks so cute. This powder is just beautiful. Look at that lovely little dimension it gets, but yet it holds all the detail. Quality time. All right, let me get the coordinating die so I can cut this out. I've got that taped into place and I'll go ahead and cut that out on the die cut machine. I guess we have to open our action wobblers. Because right now, what I'm gonna try to figure out is the positioning of quality time and the rest of the greetings because what I want to do is have a let's spend some and then quality time and I want to pop the little together down at the bottom as well. Now I do have sentiment strips for this whole thing uh, for this collection and I might take a look at those as well but I do know that okay this is going to pop up pretty high so quality time I am going to, let's pop you here, put on, let me grab my little stick here. I want to put on some foam squares. Oh, and not my human hair. Well, let's get that up. Just because I want this to have a little dimension off the card base panel, whatever part it is. Okay, so that's going to have a little bit of a shadow, right? Quality time. All right, let me, let me look at these. Never done it. Peel the top protective layer, stick image onto spring face up. Spring face up. That way? Does that one go on the spring? Is that the way we do it? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it might be. Well, we're going to try it. There we go. Okay. And that's just, you know, that's just sometimes how I roll. Okay, so that is, the sp I think, the spring face up. And then all I need to do right, is just pop this. Well, you know what? I feel like I have to do it this way because I can't see what I'm doing. Go like that, okay? And press him in the center, right? Is that how we do it? I don't know. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's very springy. Oh, I might, <laughs> I might actually need, wow, is that how it's supposed to be? It's so springy. I, I didn't think it was going to have quite that much dimension. <laughs> okay. I want this to be taller. Let me grab some thicker foam squares. I don't want to tear them off. I'll just double up the squares with yeah, these guys. Just the, another little thin friend. I just didn't realize this was going to be floating so high above, which is fine. All right. It's a whole new world. Now I realize when this is inside of a card, it will be flat. And this will give me, oh look, he, he's, he can kind of go at all an angle. Okay, let's spend some, and that way too, it can kind of tuck under a bit, couldn't it? Actually, now that I see this, let me grab the sentiment strips. There are two different sets. There's the reverse wild about you and the wild about you. And I think if I take all these out, I'm pretty sure I designed something that was to have quality time. Did I? I don't know. Wanna spend quality time with me. I could cut this into pieces. All right, let me try that because I feel like this might need a little bit more, just something different, right? And I love that this already has black ink. So I'm going to use one of my Simon Says Stamp sentiment labels. I'm going to cut this out and then we will trim it down to see if it will work with this design. So here, I don't even need to have my Misty because 
we are going to just trim this strip and I think I'll try to get it, you know, close to the edge because I gotta, I gotta cut the quality time part out. So we're gonna go right there with the, with me. That's gonna be part of it. <laughs> and then let's go wanna spend, I'm gonna get right on that K and I can color in, oh no, that looks really good. Okay, okay, we're, we're getting there. We are getting there, wanna spend. Did I? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so now I have the want to spend quality time and with me. So let me grab my marker, my Copic T10 to color the edges of this. So the reason I do this is because I like the look of black cardstock all the way through, and this is not. It's printed on white cardstock, right? This is a black toner uh, that we do these reverse sentiment strips on but the thing I oh, the thing I also love is just how crisp the white type is and if I if you use an alcohol marker it just dries instantly and you're not going to get mucky muck on anything and then all of the edges are black. I will go ahead and do this one as well and then I'm going to add some thin foam squares to the back so that we have all the right dimensions for adhering the elements to the card. I am going to create a note card that is in the fog from Simon's stamp. I think this is always such a cute color for a card base and I will score this at five and a half inches. And of course, this is 11 inches by four and a quarter and it folds down to be a standard USA two, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I will also give this a nice press with my Teflon bone folder just doesn't leave any residue at all on the fold. All right, now let me put some foam tape on the back of this panel and then we can assemble the card. That, all right, take the backers off. And you know, something that I don't do very often with my card panels, which I should, I should do this more because I hate putting something down after I've done all this work and then I messed it up somehow. So I'm actually going to take just a little glue and do a ribbon on each one. And what that will do, it just gives me a little bit of wiggle room so that I can make sure that I have this exactly where I want it. And here I wanna have it perfectly centered that without getting my head in, well, you know what? I gotta get my head in the way. Sorry, the top of my lovely gray main, but I think that will be just fine. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, it's time to figure out, like, I guess it's supposed to be a little wonky, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure, maybe that should be in the center, and then the little with me could be at an angle, and then the wanna spend could also be at an angle, right? But this could come up a little. See how you just get that cute little suggestion of the hearts? I love that. Um, quality time with me. I mean, that's that's kind of cute. I still think it needs to come up a little. I think he needs to come up a little. And maybe, maybe what we do, do I put quality time down first and then I know what's straight? Hmm, let's zoom in a little. I think this is cute. I'm going to pick him up. And I guess I just take the backers off, right? Take it off here. Again, never, never have I ever. Uh, how does it come off? Hmm. Well, hold, hold tight with me here. I'm sure it comes off. <laughs> Is there like an easy way? Okay, that look, there we go. There we go. We gotcha, we gotcha. Taking it off. There's one side. See why you need one of these tools? I, I can't. Let's go to the other side. Okay, that's not wanting to work. How about over there? Like, there we go. Okay, just keeping it real. Now, we're going to place this little friend right in the center. Right side to side. Is he good? I, I mean, I know he's going to bounce around and stuff. Like that. Okay, side to side. Press. We have, oh, it's really cute. Look at him. He's, he's just, 
Oh, you know, if you told me that I don't get this much joy out of that, I would have done this a long time ago. Okay, this is taking far longer than I thought it would, but you know, it's part of the process. And I actually really do think the coloring on this guy's cute. I like it better than what I did with the Copics. So let's come in here. Quality time, basically in the center. See how I can wiggle a little with the glue? Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like there to be a connection, right? I don't want quality to be floating below. I want it to be directly linked to my shaken koala. And then here, we'll just pop this uh, underneath little quality. Well, you know what, again, when in Rome, put the glue on and then you know you have just a second before it has to go down. But I do like the idea that that will have that little angle. And see, it has a different dimension too, so it fits under there really well. I just glanced up just to make sure I was filming. It's one of those moments where I thought, you know, knowing me, I'm probably not even filming right now, but I am. And now, want to spend is going to have that little bit of tilt as well to match the with me. Oh, it's really cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. You, you just, cause yeah, you can do that. And then it just vibrates like crazy. I don't know if someone would want to spend quality time with me. I look, I look a little too energetic, but let's grab some of my favorite little sequins here. Uh, sparkle all the way. And I might as well. I've gone this far. Thank you. So, someone did appreciate my Forrest Gump reference when I said I was the Forrest Gump of crafting. You know, of card making, not of crafting. I mean, I'm sure there are people who are, you know, much more gumpy than I am. But, I, you know, it's fun, right? It's just fun. It's fun. Liquid coming on. And get it flowing and boop. Little boop there. Little friend in there. Oh, get on there. Boop. I love this glue because it is clear. Boop. So if you get too much, it's okay. It's gonna it's gonna dry just fine. Boop and boop. And that is my finished card project. First time I have ever used an action wobbler. And I feel like I feel like there's no way I'll be able to send this because instead I'm going to be sitting in here bouncing it and flipping it all day long. Oh my gosh, I totally want to spend quality time with me. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope this inspires you to try out a new product that you have never before used. You can find links to all the products that I did use today in the YouTube description box. I always include links for your shopping and when you shop with my links you directly support my channel. I'll see you back here with another card project soon. To see a few more card projects using this stamp set, check out the two thumbnails I have linked below and I will see you in those videos.